Preceptor. My lord, it has begun. The power is already building. Are you ready for your task? We shall not fail you, my lord. The price of failure is Armageddon. God go with you. that thing? Oh, there was a girl in Paris, but it didn't work out. <laughs> oh, way to go, mate. I've heard about those French babes. <laughs> I think she'd be interested in a good-looking Aussie pushman, eh? Only if it helped her career. <laughs> Weather like this, the old crate flies herself. How about weather like that? to yet another clear hot day. In the south, the bizarre weather continues. Marseille, 20 days of rain. Bordeaux, 30. And across the world, from Beijing to New York, there are reports of earth tremors, floods, typhoons. Who is it? Vernon Blier? It's Nico Collard. You're early. You said it was uh, urgent. We don't have much time. The power sources are building to a peak. It's all in the manuscript. Look, I decoded it. No one's ever done that. They paid me serious money. But the Earth? We're all in danger. Now they want to kill me because I know too much. Somehow, we'd landed in the jungle, and I was alive. Then, I smelled smoke. I was gonna have to get out, and fast. I unfastened the seatbelt carefully. Whoa, Harry! What's going on? Harry? Man, that was close. We weren't safe at all. We were balanced on the edge of a cliff, and now I was trapped in the rear half of the plane. There was no way of opening the window. We were balanced on top of the cliff. In a situation like this, smoke was a bad thing. A buckle and strap held the crate tightly to a metal frame. The buckle was quick release. I soon had the crate freed up. An unopened bottle of beer was lying on the floor of the plane.
It was Harry Gilligan, the pilot, out cold. Harry! Harry, wake up! <laughs> Slapping him wasn't gonna work. Searching Harry turned up a handy bottle opener. You never know when a beer's gonna come in handy. Cheers, mate. Oh, came to a while back. <laughs> Thought I'd grab 40 winks. Oh, don't get much chance in my line. Uh, oh. What were you doing flying us into that storm? You nearly got us killed! Oh, calm down, will ya? The storm came from nowhere. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Weird. So how far is it to the landing strip? Well, not far. We were right on top of it when the storm hit. You okay, Harry? Sure, mate. The plane's completely trashed. Ah, no big deal. Well, how can you be so calm about it? I won it in a card game. Terrific. Got a free tank of fuel, too. Which was lucky. Why? Well, we wouldn't have got here without it. I borrowed your bottle opener. No sweat. Do you drink this stuff all the time? Ah, tastes like angel sweat. I wasn't strong enough to push it out. Here goes! Yes! Whoa! Maybe not. I was going to need more weight at the back of the plane. But what? Are you trying to kill us? You okay, Harry? Sure, mate. Harry, we need more ballast at the back of the plane. Well, okay, George, if you think it'll help. Harry! Just don't move! You bet! No! Not yet! Harry, stay there! Why? Whoa! Phew! That was close. Oh, I don't know. Could have been worse. Yeah? I might still have been in it. Trying to cheer me up, Harry? Ha! Ah, you know, you're not bad for a yank. That makes me feel a whole lot better. We make a great team. Hmm. Oh, I could help you out. Here, with your work. Be your driver. Sort out the locals. Harry, like I told you, I'm only here to meet someone, then I'm out of here. Oh, yeah, maybe I know the fella. I doubt it. Guy called Chalmundali. Never heard of him. Exactly. What's he do? He's a scientist. Well, what kind of a scientist? He lives in the jungle, says he's built a machine that can create limitless energy. I'm a patent lawyer. He wants me to write the patent. Make us all rich, okay? Capiche? Oh, I see. A mad scientist. Oh. I don't want to be rude, George, but did you seriously believe all that crap? Of course not. But have you ever lived in Idaho? Fair enough. Now what are we gonna do? Well, you lead the way. Quit messing around, mate. Guess next time I'll avoid the scenic route. Yeah, well, when you've had your bit of fun, I'll see you at the top.
for the last time. Where is he? I don't know! I don't know! For God's sake, I've told you everything I know! For which I am deeply grateful. Nevertheless, it was always my intention to kill you. Goodbye, Mr. Cholmondley. How many times? It's not Cholmondley, it's... It was a Sunday morning. I was three months behind on the rent. And my editor had given me another bum assignment. An interview with some hacker about the end of the world. Where had it all gone wrong? Was I never going to get that lucky break? What had happened to my glittering career in journalism? And then, everything changed. It was quiet, but that didn't mean the place was empty. The door was securely locked. I needed to find another way if I was going to get into that apartment. There were no messages on the pad. A pencil hung beside it on a piece of string. Through the grime, I could see a shape. A shape that looked a lot like a body. The window was securely locked. I knew that climbing balconies was crazy, but the story had me hooked and I wasn't about to let it go. It was pretty dark, but I could just make out the shape of a bed. There was a gap, but the latch meant it was still closed. It's true, a press card can get you in anywhere. Just one little wiggle between the window and the lock and the latch lifted. Here goes. Whoever did the dusting here never got round to the TV. The wardrobe was stuffed with unwashed clothes. Disgusting. I couldn't hear anything. The guy was dead all right. The computer was badly damaged. The computer had been wrecked. Someone had removed the hard drive in a hurry. This was one serious binder collection. He must have been dead before he hit the ground, which ruled out CPR, thank God. I didn't fancy going mouth to mouth with that acne and those teeth. I knew I had to search the body. It was still warm. All I could find was his business card. Vernon Blier, software consultant. This was the crazy geek I'd been due to meet, all right. Maybe he wasn't so crazy after all. Who needs ornaments when you've got a TV? Something shiny caught my eye. It was a shell casing from the gun the killer used. I held on to it. I needed any clue I could find. The door was securely locked. I couldn't hear anything.
Get away from those doors. Over here. Where I can see you. Okay. Whatever you say. I've been waiting a long time for the chance to do this. So, we've met before? Oh, yes. Really? You obviously didn't make an impression the first time. You won't be so clever when I've killed you. Time's up! Mm. You! You're not going to stop us this time. I never forget a face. So why had I forgotten hers? Ow! Oof! Damn! Come back, you salope! Where did she disappear to? The fridge door had just saved my life. I was lucky the pan had deflected one of those bullets. Someone had thrown away a bank statement. Someone had thrown away a bank statement. According to the bank statement, Vernon Blier was pretty short of money. Maybe that's why he'd planned on selling his story. It was the card I'd found on the dead guy. His phone number was 0123748019. Perhaps I should make a call. I wondered if Andre might have any ideas. Andre Lobino? Hi, Andre. My dear Nico, how are you? Having one of my interesting days? I was about to interview a guy when somebody shot him. My God, are you hurt? I'm okay, but the killer escaped before I could stop her. Her? A woman? That's right. And it's not the only strange thing. I think this is more than just your ordinary homicide. Oh dear. Are you off on one of your little adventures again, Nico? Hey, what do you mean? I suppose at least that idiot Stobar isn't involved this time. Andre, I was nearly killed. Okay, okay. Trouble is, I can't find any leads to follow up. The killer must have left a trail of some kind. Search the whole area for clues. I'll see what I can turn up. Andre, I'm going to get back to the investigation. Okay, Nico. Oh, and what I said earlier, I'm sorry. Don't worry, Andre. I ask for it sometimes. But you know, George, he was a lot of things. But he was never an idiot. If you need my help, be sure to call me. Maybe there was a clue on the answer machine. You have three new messages. Vernon, darling, it's Mamo here. I'm at my wit's end. I've given your trousers three washes at a hundred degrees and that stain still won't come out. It's more like cement than mayonnaise. Anyway, the ironing's done. Oh, I hate these machines. Au revoir, à dimanche. This is Nico Coladia from La Liberté. Just to say I'll be round at eight, as promised. Goodbye. Vernon! It's Beatrice. Good luck with the reporter. I'll be waiting for you in the gardens afterwards. Love you, Snooky. Snooky? The rug was cheap and nasty. I pulled back the rug. One of the floorboards was loose. The floorboard lifted up easily. In the space below, there was a small safe. 
The combination could be the same as the number on the statement, but that slim hope vanished as soon as I keyed in the numbers. Damn! Maybe the phone number matched the combination, but that wasn't the case. It was just an old sheet of newspaper. But you never know what might come in handy. The gate was locked. What have we here? It was a wig, an expensive one too. But more important, it was an exact copy of my own style. The label inside had been cut out. The killer had covered her tracks. Almost. There were a few strands of blonde hair inside. So the woman I'm after really has blonde hair, not black. It was the front sheet of an old newspaper. The paper had more stories about strange weather around the world. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. I tell you, I've had enough of this job. <sighs> day in, day out, the same old drudgery, huh? Why don't you give it up, then? Give it up? <laughs> Who do you think you are telling me to give up my job? I thought... Thought you were too good for the likes of me, I expect? No, not at all. I didn't mean... I was a dancer once, you know. At Le Moulin Rouge. So stick that on your velo and ride it. That's wonderful. Of course. Alphonse, <laughs> he wouldn't have any of it. I'll not have you flushing your nickels out of Paris, he said. Get a proper job. So I did. A real liberated man. He was an angel. I won't hear a word against him. Have you seen a young blonde woman by any chance? I certainly have. Skinny looking thing, like you. Thanks. Which way did she go? She got into a sports car and drove off. Do you happen to know the make of car? What do you take me for? Some kind of mechanic? You'll have to ask someone else. Do you know a young man called Vernon? I'm sure I don't know what you're suggesting. I am a married woman. Of course, between you and me, in my dancing days, it was a different matter. Just one thing. Your husband, Alphonse, is he around? No. I thought perhaps he might have seen something. It's unlikely. Why? He left me 20 years ago. Ran away. Oh, I'm sorry. Ha! <gasps> Don't be. Happiest day of my life. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Au revoir. Hi. Well, hi there, beautiful. You are looking for something? I might be. <laughs> you have come to the right place. Right place, right guy, huh? That's how it looks to me, too. Were you around a little earlier? Well, I've been around a while. Oh, that's good. I'm a reporter, and I need to ask you a few questions. 
Don't suppose you saw a sports car in the area earlier? The red E-type Jag, you mean? Yes. Why did you notice it? I used to run one a little like it. Did you happen to get the registration number? Hey, there's only one set of numbers I like. And I'm not talking shoe size, huh? Thanks. Anyway. Do you happen to know a guy called Vernon? The coder? Yes. Yeah, he's cool. Hangs out in the park with his girlfriend. Where's the park? Just down there, where Twitcher hangs about. About Vernon? Yeah? I'm afraid he's been killed. Shot. Oh man, that's too bad. Still, a neighborhood like this, only the brave survive, huh? So where's your posse? What? Big guy like you? Gotta have a posse, surely. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, uh, I got two. Wow. Uh, how about you? you? You got a posse? Oh, yeah. But I like to keep it secret. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Bonjour. Yes? I wonder if you can help me. I doubt it. And anyway, I'm on duty. It's pretty quiet this morning. It's Sunday. What do you expect? There was an E-type Jag in the area a little earlier. What of it? Could you tell me something about it? I doubt it. And if I could, I wouldn't. You could be anybody. What does this prove? Any fool can throw together a fake ID. True, but only a real fool would impersonate a journalist at my paper. Do you happen to know a young computer programmer called Vernon? Does he have a car? Not that I'm aware of. Then it is highly unlikely that I have met him. Take a look at this. Interesting. 12 millimeter. And recently fired. That's right. But how do you know about firearms? Let us just say, I have not always been a traffic warden. What else can you tell me about it? From the head stamp, manufactured in Prague. And the gun itself? The new Magnum, if I'm not wrong. You can tell all that from the shell? You just have to know what to look for. It came from the gun of the woman who tried to kill me. This is not a Saturday night special. You are dealing, I think, with professional killers. Can you help me? Fire away. Ha! My little joke. Did you see a blonde woman running by here earlier? Yes. Around your size, good build, muscle tone, shoe size three, maybe four, and I think not French. That's amazing. No, not amazing. Just good training. Training? I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to tell you anything more. Did you see the E-type Jag that was in the area earlier? Yes, I did. I believe it belonged to the killer. And they say crime doesn't pay. What can you tell me about it? It was parked illegally. I gave it a ticket. Great. Do you have the registration number? Uh, here it is. 451 cac 75. Merci. Can you tell me anything else about the car? Hmm. You know, there was some kind of mask on the passenger seat. Mask? You mean like a child's mask? No, an old mask. The kind they wear in a the theater. Merci, madame. You've been a great help. It is but a courtesy from one professional to another. Of course. Sounds like the police are on their way. I would appreciate it if you kept our little conversation to yourself. You understand. Of course. I wouldn't want to blow your cover. Exactly. By the way, just who do you work for? Can I trust you? Of course. One day soon, the aliens will land. We are preparing to fight them. You may join us if you wish. That's uh, very kind of you. 
But I have to go now. Au revoir. What's going on? There has been a murder. We are questioning everyone in the area. What is your name? Nicole Collard. It's her, all right. Please come with us. And this is... Come on, speak up! Nicole Collard. Aha! The woman he had arranged to meet. She's a tough one, I think, sir. Like me to loosen her tongue a little? Not quite yet. Your identity card, please. My press card. A journalist! Typical. You have a problem with journalists? Only the spineless, lying, interfering variety. Looks like I'm in trouble then. She's the murderer, monsieur! Lock her up before she kills us all! Control yourself, madame. I'm conducting an investigation here. And we're getting on so well. How did you know the dead man? He contacted me through my paper. He wanted to meet. Why? Some nonsense about the end of the world. Why did you kill him? I didn't. But you admit you were here. He was already dead when I arrived. I broke in through the bedroom window. The killer was still here. And? We fought through there, in the kitchen. Then she ran off down the fire escape, and I lost her. Hmm. There are certainly signs of a struggle. Inspector. We. Oui? I've got the number of the killer's car. My, you are being helpful. Are you quite sure you're a journalist? Do you want the number or not? Very well. 451 CAC 75. Thanks. Here's the wig the killer wore. I'll take that as evidence. Where did you find it? Over the wall at the back of the apartment. Oh, I see. How oh, terrible. You've been framed. Correct, Inspector. She's the killer! I saw her with my own eyes! The woman I fought was really a blonde. The neighbor said she had dark hair. I've already given you the wig. For what it's worth. Have you any idea why he was killed? None at all. Perhaps it was to stop him talking to me. Not everybody rates journalists so highly, mademoiselle. How did you know Vernon was due to meet me? Your message on the answer phone. Am I free to go? Don't let her get away! The evidence is clear enough. I'm placing you under arrest, mademoiselle Collard. Officer, take her away. With pleasure, sir. Huh? Can you hear me? Can you speak? Who are you? Chum. Yeah? Chum! That's okay. I'm your chum. Danger. What? The world is in danger. Susaro. Who's Susaro? Just a few more seconds and you could have told me so much. Poor guy. It was like a giant omega. And in the center, some kind of slot. The workbench was a mess. But I hadn't flown halfway around the world to critique someone's housekeeping. In amongst the junk, was a postcard, all the way from England, some place called Glastonbury. It was signed Bruno. A second look turned up a magnifying glass. Suddenly I was five years old and back in California, setting fire to my father's sun hat. The postcard showed a picture of a quaint English village. On the back was a message, have had to leave Paris in a hurry. Suggest you do the same. Cesaro is on to you, your friend, Bruno. The postmark showed that it had been sent from a place called Glastonbury. This was the kind of job I could do with my eyes shut. In fact, 
That's normally how I did it. All I found was his ID, Chalmundali, the guy I was supposed to meet. I couldn't figure out how to open the door. The old pressure pad trick, eh? There was some kind of housing on the wall, and in the center was a hole. Wow, so the guy actually built the thing. I wondered if I could get it to work. The machine spluttered like an engine starved of fuel. attracted some attention. Question was, good guys or bad guys? It was now broken beyond repair. Totally trashed. The lever had been blown clear of the wreckage. I took the lever. I was going to have to find another way out. The rod looked about the right size to fit the hole. Cool, it fits. I removed the rod from the hole in the wall. There was a bird's nest up on a small ledge, but it was out of reach. I couldn't reach the nest. That did the trick. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of a familiar shape. Harry had made it after all. It was a statue carved from stone. The back had been hollowed out. Inside were the remnants of a fire.
This was my kindling. Look, monsieur. The evil, it is come. It's a trick! Get back here now! Come on, Harry! We gotta get out of here! Why ahead of you, mate? Go, go, go! As the lunatic Aussie saved my life, I was certain of one thing. I wasn't going back to the office in Idaho. I'd had my fill of patents. Nope. I was going to England to find the mysterious Bruno. <laughs> 